Hey everybody, I'm Jody Vance. And I'm George Affleck. And it is time for... Truth! You can't handle the truth! Unspun. <laughs> oh, lordy, 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 lordy. Let's what start is going with, on a park board. <laughs> let's this start week. there. Jody? I mean, okay, first of all, first of all, for those who maybe were on vacation, for those who maybe just are so sick of it, they can't even pay attention any longer. Let's unpack, let's unspin what happened at this week's park board meeting about the accessibility study. I'm air quotes for those tuning in without video. I'm air quoting the study part. The most skewed survey in the history of surveys about the next Do not steps. use the word bicycle in that study. We will not be discussing bicycles today. Ideological <laughs> bicycles. I use the I word and the B Hush. word. I know. Okay, Hush. so George, what the hell? Okay. Well, I, yeah, the study, uh, I don't know, it's like an election year. What is, it's, what is happening? It's crazy. So they did a study uh, yeah. about people movement. <laughs> what are we calling it? I took, I took the Mobile survey. Access? Yeah. What, you did? You were yeah, one of the 4,500 it, it, it went some, yeah, of the how many millions of people that go to the Stanley Park, the 4,000 people million, that were asked yeah. about it or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but it went yeah. something like this. When you go to Stanley Park, how do you go there? Do you ride a bike? Do you walk a bike? Or do you walk think about your bike? bike? <laughs> like it was that kind of skew. Like it was so. A little, a little bit, uh, yeah. That was, that's the term they use. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Predictive voting. <laughs> It's like, come on. I mean, and then, so yeah, so they at the, they were presenting it this week and they presented this report and then they had people who wanted to speak to it. Um, hundreds. And uh, hun hundreds, yeah. And, and mostly, you know, park board passionate park board people who generally uh no offense and i'm not being ageist generally scale up and you know they're like my age or older it's so old they're like me uh yeah old not, like you not old like me yeah no like they're they're not uh they're, they have, they're certainly opinionated but they got to so first that first night of speakers they got to three speakers this is aside from the whole other issue that happened that night um with a staffer uh which we'll have to get into as well um, we do you know, and they, they shut down because the person was saying was basically a kind of attacking staff a little bit, you know, and, and saying, you know, that, uh, you know, it, it has ha when I was in City Hall, this happened on occasion. Gregor Robertson as mayor when I was there, he I felt sometimes he was a bit hard on the people uh, and he was pro overly protective of staff. I think staff can take you should be able to take a bit of heat. Uh, they know they're working in a politically charged city and a, and they work for government and. Uh, but if they start abusing staff or something, yeah, sure. But this was not even close to that. I didn't hear it's anything crazy. abusive. I watched it. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear anything abusive yeah. in that. You, they no. should spend a day in talk radio, man, or just dealing with the park board on Twitter. Uh, but we'll get that yeah. to later. Or have um, clients so, in the business. So when the individual who was yes. speaking was challenging the park board as a whole um, at, at yeah. where they're falling down, in the opinion of this taxpayer, that was cut mm -hmm. off, cut short, and then the entire meeting was cut off. Then let's talk about Jose Rafael, can we? Because yes. Yes, this person, there's obviously connection in my mind. In that. So Even though they were separate there. conversations. Well, he got up. It was very strange. I've never seen this before. He works for Park Board, and he got up and said he felt he was being intimidated by the public and by uh, his manage the management at Park Board. Uh, he didn't define that. Uh, I can imagine if you work for the park board, it must be horrible, <laughs> especially if you're trying to do your job and you can't get your job done because you're being told to not let, not cut the grass or let, you know, like my run this morning, I took a picture, I tweeted it, uh, the Nick Shook in, in the park at uh, English Bay. You can't see it from one angle on the seawall because the bushes, the brambles, the, the, the blackberry bushes have grown so high that you can't see this iconic, this Nick Shook that we put there that for people to see. Uh, that's typical. That's like epitome of like neglect. Anyway, so this guy came in and, he, and uh, very unusual starts basically slamming management and, and saying he doesn't feel safe and, and feels 
uh, that there is racism. I think he, he, he alluded to and, and he got shut down. Bullying in the workplace, racism, Bullying. intimidation. He used all the words that a whistleblower or somebody who was being abused in the workplace, which, which by the way, is an elected office of management that is that is handling this workplace and then the the can of worms exploded george this yeah. one individual stepping up and was very calm very measured yes. clearly had decided yes. this was the path that they were going to take cut off by it was camille dumont right who was like whoa whoa mm-hmm. wait can't whatever paraphrasing but he basically stopped and said you're going to need to go to your manager on this i'm like <laughs> the irony the so, irony sorry what I- sorry what I mean, I'm trying to think what I would have done in that kind of situation. I think that you have to you have to do a certain you can't. I mean, obviously, this person's in his precarious situation where he feels he, he's he's at his wit's end, and he's a fairly new employee too. Um, I would have said he, this, George. George you want to know what I would have said? Yeah. I would have yeah. said, "We're going to take this in camera. Everybody, yeah. pause yeah. the feed. We'll continue yeah. in camera right now." Somebody will take notes on all of this. It will be, you know, an in-camera meeting. It's not for public consumption. I totally get that. No staff. No staff. But to be held to account in that moment. I agree. I think that's exactly right. I think is the way to go. That's exactly, I think, what I would have done. In-camera camera is the right terminology, too. I think that you you need, and then that may not include staff, because uh, and somebody, one of the park commissioners would need to take notes. Um, and, and all staff would be required to exit, uh, and this person would be give them the ability to, to express their opinions because clearly there's something broken. And um, and if not, then the private meeting. But certainly, just send them to you need to go talk to staff or talk to your union or whatever. Clearly, this person has felt he's hit, ro- you know, he's been stonewalled or whatever. Nobody does this. Nobody goes and does no no. It just doesn't happen. It's it's highly unusual, and I think it's you see the frustration. I can only imagine. I, and I said this, you know, this poor guy on, you know, he'd be cutting the lawn or whatever he was doing, and people driving by. Yeah, finally cutting the lawn. Way to go, park board. Of course, because guess what? They don't cut the lawn anymore. They don't do anything anymore. Uh, all they do is you know build tents and parks and help uh, and put washrooms in parks for for homeless people and 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 don't do any, any, take care of our trees. They just die and it's like they're not doing their job um, and put cones throughout our stand, throughout Stanley Park that cost hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to get rid of parking, which is two million dollars in revenue they don't have. Kit's pool breaks down. What else we got? Water parks being shut down. What else does Park Board do? <laughs> like everything they do is it's done garbage. nothing. You know what they're really good at, apparently, is trying to clap back at those who would hold them to account. And there was a lot of that. I, yeah. And, I, you know, I'm an outspoken Vancouverite. I don't think, think I'm anti-anybody, but I'm an outspoken Vancouverite. And it really pisses off a couple of people that I have the platform that I have. I've mm-hmm. gotten the, you call yourself a journalist. I'm like, oh, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I actually call myself a person who cares about the city. And I know you do too. And that's taking the spin out of the rhetoric that flies around. But I'm telling you, George, mm-hmm. when that park board meeting went down and Jose Rafael stepped up and talked about bullying and intimidation and what have you, and there was pushback on the fact that they, they shuttered that meeting so uh, in such a, 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 a an expedited fashion. It was like, really, it yep. was condescending. It was... There was, there was so much wrong with how it was handled. Unsurprisingly, frankly, I'm taking the spin out of what I'm saying right here. But what really gets me is how the, the double speak is happening with a couple in particular, because not everybody associated with Park Board is a bad human being, but there are a couple literal, legitimate, nasty people, bad actors. Uh, stories that yes. I won't say publicly here, but the allegations are unbelievable. And let me tell you, my DMs filled up very quickly. Um, others who are taking actions that um, elected officials, you want to talk about journalists, talk about elected officials acting poorly on social media or people reaching out saying, this is the DM I just got from one of the park board commissioners. Wow. And they're just like, what? Like you want that, you want those things to go public. And at the same time, there's no time for that noise. Like it's just, it's so yeah. But just when you think it couldn't get worse, George, and when we were talking back and forth on Twitter or in our text message exchange, it's like we could spend hours talking about what's happened just this week 
uh, with regard to Park Board, and we'd still not scratch the surface. Well, like the fact got, that nothing was mentioned about the businesses people. in Stanley Park. No, like, exactly. uh, well, and and, and uh, you know, we can get into the Jan Arden and the horse drawn carriage, but I think we Let's have a lot to talk about. Just, yeah. yeah. Well, br- yes. You, you. I mean, briefly, she's she's calling for a stop of the horse drawn carriage. You know, and tying it to the fact that what's the big deal about the you know getting stuck in traffic or behind a horse? Hey, here's an idea: get rid of the horse drawn carriage. I don't know. I I disagree. I think it's great. I think it's cool. I, I know she says it's cruel. I've been to that barn. I don't think it's cruel. I think you know. But I'm going to suggest there's opinion. middle ground. I know, shocking, shocking. But I, if I had my middle <laughs> on the orca right now, what I would write is how I've done my research on this. I'm a horse person. I went to horse camp as a child. I had my own pony. I used to barrel race and keyhole, so I'm not anti-event. Um, but I look at what's happening, and the people that run it are good people, and they care for their animals mm-hmm. for sure. Back in the day when the, the, the carriage was initially started in 1888, it was an eight-person carriage drawn by four horses. It is now 26 people at $50 a head, with two horses in front and they leave every 30 minutes. There's, there's a way to reduce the amount of stress and strain put on those animals in a moderate way in the name of doing the right thing, as opposed to making the most money in this particular, there's, there's time for evolution for every industry. And I, I agree with Jen, honestly. I also feel the same way, frankly, about the horse-drawn carriages in Central Park in New York, as I do about the horse-drawn carriages in Victoria. I think the time has passed. There was a time when that was our mode of transportation. And the horses are a working animal and they're a necessity on a farm environment. But do they need to haul tourists around on asphalt in Stanley Park? I don't think so. That's my opinion. And I'm cool with that. But that's because I'm a horse person and i've seen the trauma that can be caused i mean let's go to the calgary stampede and the chuck wagon races can we start there like there are large fish to fry here Um, i don't want to get into that right but uh, i think it's going to be i'm sure the park will prioritize this over anything else (laughs) because if we make it into two bike lanes they will if we make it into uh, two bike lanes they will um you know the thing with park this week it was the gift i kept on giving for certainly for the mpa i don't know where abc is in this day they were invisible on that issue on what was going on at park board there was nothing not weird. a peep from them uh as the leading second party uh, you know i would say that's a polling i've seen john is uh cooper from the mpa they're seeing a surge uh i've seen it from a couple different polls that have been shown to me uh mm. you're seeing stagnation in colleen hardwood's campaign uh, and we're seeing nowhere like this, you know, Kennedy Stewart sticking at around 34%, 35%, no, no change, which is good news for him because he can win with that. Um, but, uh, Might it change and, though know, when it, he, when he, uh, signs off on yet another cup of coffee, George. Well, that's just, I know. So this week that's it. Let's pivot to council because first the gift of, it keeps on giving a park board. Now at council, they decided through Adrian Carr's motion uh, last night to uh, spend seven hundred thousand dollars of taxpayers' money on a lawsuit against oil companies for them to pay for the damage they've done to our city. Lofty goal. Uh, we know that oil and gas uh, have have an, you know are part of the climate change problem we have. Absolutely. Is this the right use of resources at this time? Is this the role of the city? Uh, but it passed, and so we're going to be spending seven hundred thousand um, dollars of taxpayers' money on this. This is, you know, Vision did this a few times when I was there. They had lawsuits that they paid for uh, related to several issues, uh, mostly related to oil and gas. So it's it's an effective political device. Uh, I think you're seeing again, uh, even though the ABC uh, people on council voted against it. Uh, their mayoral candidates being silent on it. And I think that's on purpose because as we've talked a lot about here is the mushy middle. How do you win that middle ground? How, you don't want to be too extreme. And, and the oil and gas issue uh, being, uh, you know, supporting those kinds of ideas certainly worked for vision for a long time. And so I'm guessing that ABC is being very careful about how they position themselves on this issue because they don't, they don't want to lose those middle votes. Um, but I think this is bigger than that anymore. I think this is not 2014 anymore when Vision did this lawsuit against uh, uh, Kinder Morgan. Uh, I, I just I just don't think it's we're there anymore. I think the people in the city are are are, ups, are, are you know are done. We're done with all this. Tapped. Spending. We're tapped. It, we're done. Tax rate. Especially when, rate. if I may jump in here, tax George. Tax increases coming. Yep. Two things. Two things. Some people listening right now have no idea who the ABC person is. 
right? So we're going to get. Yeah, it doesn't matter really. <laughs> Nobody the confusion, does. <laughs> but the confusion behind I, who are you voting for and how? But yeah. I want to get to. I want to get to the yeah. to the. Let's just get the explicit because we're going to get at the bullshit cup of coffee. Look at you got a bullshit cup of coffee in your hand right now. There are hundreds yeah. of thousands of taxpayer dollars a cup of coffee at a time that are being used for things that we didn't ask for. We didn't vote for this. This close mm -hmm. to an election, why not put something like this on the table and ask the question, would you like the city of Vancouver to, to take a dollar for every person in this city in order to go up against big oil? And if it passes, spend it. And if it doesn't, don't. It's like the, the Olympic bid and, and putting that to a plebiscite. Like why, why not? Like in these things, it's like, what are we afraid of? This to me, yeah, this uh, big that, oil and that, gas that, thing. That failed. Uh, yeah. you, know, you know, that one failed. Like Colleen and I tweeted it out. Uh, I, uh, Colleen Hardwick put a motion forward to do a plebiscite, 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 whatever you call it. Either. Um, tomato, yeah, tomato. Referendum. Referendum, there you referendum go. On, uh, on the Olympics. And she's the only one who voted for it. Nine, uh, 10 voted against doing a, this this referendum I, I don't get that to me it was she i heard her and i sometimes called in she's way too far away from i'm like okay you're like but on that issue i heard her on cknw and i heard her on uh, you know read some stuff and her logic was solid her yeah. argument was there she actually won uh she disputed this because they wouldn't let her bring it forward it was called out of order uh that she won that so she brought it forward and still it failed and i think that was a really bad decision on all the people who voted against doing this I, I don't understand why they would not support this you know vision in vancouver when they first got elected the first thing they did was do a referendum on the olympics and it was very politically charged and motivated people and got them a lot of support i don't understand yeah. why you would you know so it's a it's a plus for for colleen in my mind i certainly would have supported her if i was there i don't get the logic of not supporting this uh, into uh, fear of being saying you're you're against first nations initiatives i, I don't understand that I, there was no sense to that her logic was and her argument was solid solidly uh, saying that there was this issue back thing that, that she hadn't consulted with them about this idea and that's a fair point but in the end of the day we are all as residents of this city and we should all have a say in something and i say this is a big one and we're certainly hearing that this olympics is going potentially not even going to happen because it's too expensive and we can't pull it together Anyways, politically, this oil and gas, the park board, this referendum, you just see all the things lining up for the candidates. This is not, and Justin McElroy's piece you saw, we talked about this, you know, that came out today, uh, 300, was it 340 motions in the past four years by this council? A record number surpassing any other city by a, like a billion and 70% and more than the previous council, which I was in. And that was a lot of emotions when I was there. Some of them were from me. Um, so it's, it's unbelievable, this council and, and, and what they've not achieved, what the park board's been doing. I don't know, this election is going to be crazy. And I think and Francis Bula, to your point earlier, tweeted out about there's 10 parties running in Vancouver, 10 parties, five in Surrey. we got a new Gordon, Gordy Hogue is running for mayor now in Surrey. He used to be the mayor of White Rock. I guess he moved across the street on the other side of 16th Avenue. Uh, or so he always in lived in Surrey. He always, he always, he always lived, lived in Surrey, Surrey but called he was it mayor White Rock. I lived there. He, right. he was married when I was in high school when I lived in White Rock. Um, yeah. So he, he would have been a strong candidate, but uh, I think there's so many things going on out there. Uh, you know, they're handing, uh, they're going to, in Surrey, just like in Vancouver, with all these parties, they're handing the incumbents the the, the opportunity to win. Uh, I think McCallum will win because of that. And I think, uh, I think in Vancouver, it's very likely, unless John, unless some people drop out, uh, I think Kennedy Stewart will win, and it's going to be a very confusing ballot. So I could see, as I predicted, NPA could win uh, the the, the uh, majority on council, but the mayor will still be Kennedy Stewart, unless John can find a way to get some votes away from Ken Sim. And it's it's early. Um, it's going to be. I'm going to suggest that's, it's going to be ugly. That's for sure. I'm going to suggest the person that's going to win the mayor's office in in Vancouver uh, is going to be the person who actually says out loud and then actually focuses and delivers on it, bringing back the basics. Because this city right now, the, the most unbelievable engagement across the board, I'm shocked at the number of people who respond and reply and, 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 and talk to me just when I bump into them on the street about yeah. the frustration surrounding 
garbage pickup, crumbling road infrastructure, talking yeah. about charging us to drive around our neighborhoods that we paid for, schools that are, you know, yeah. not being built because we don't have the budget to do the thing. Our parks are overgrown. Our water features are busted. We had to scream from the hilltops to get Kitts Pool fixed in time for this summer. Are you kidding me? After a heat dome last year, how is that not a priority? Like park board, city hall, all of it in one big ball of wax. Somebody needs to be the adult in the room and somebody needs to say, I'm going to deliver you uh, your, your safety, your water, I'm going to clean up your garbage and recycling. I'm going to make sure that your roads are safe and free of potholes. I'm going to stop putting Mm -hmm. blocks in front of so many roads that people are whipping down other streets to try and get around all the, the, like the the willy nilly infrastructure that has become a part of this piecemeal, you know, pie in the sky, you know, this is approved. That's not, this is working. That isn't, there's so little that's actually functioning. And all we continue to hear is, it's seriously, I've lived here my whole life. No, no, and, I and George, I, I seriously feel like all I hear about is how much more it's going to cost me and how much less I'm going to get for that dollar. Yeah. And somebody needs to step into the role and 10%. say, I'm going, to be, I'm going to be transparent in what we bring in and I'm going to be yeah. transparent on how it's spent. You're going to get the mushy middle by saying those two things. This time, for sure, I think you're right, and I think in that tap 10% tax increase, which they'll have to start talking about in you know soon, uh, and they've already kind of touched on it that, that we're going to see that. I think I don't know if you, I get all the emails. I sign up for all the leaders and parties' emails because I want to see what's yeah. going on. John Cooper's email came today. I'm not. I don't want to sit there because I was MPA, and I've been quite careful about you know saying which party. You know, but I have. It's been interesting when you t- say the adult in the room. When I ask people or they ask me who they should vote for in the next election. I go, I don't know who you should, who do you think you should vote for? Well, I don't want to vote for Kennedy Stewart. I'm going, well, then who do you looking at the candidates? I, I, I my friends are quite diverse. Yeah. Overwhelmingly, they're saying John Cooper. They really are. I, they're going, well, I, John Cooper has been there. He seems like, a, like, he's kind of like my dad. <laughs> you know, like, they're like, and I kind of, I kind of want that. I, I'm, I, I want that person to be in, I don't, I don't want this chaos anymore. I want, you know, I don't want, this silliness and all this stuff anymore. I'm hearing that from all sorts of people in their arts and this or all over the map, contrary to popular belief from my people who think my world revolves around super conservative people. Um, that's it what doesn't I'm hearing. because I'm your friend and I'm not super conservative. Yeah, exactly. I'm the mushy so middle. I'm, I'm not I'm like, we're not the same person, you and I, but I'm, you know, in my ears, you don't come across as somebody who's died in the wool of anything. Yeah, no, because you're totally. looking for I think what's gonna... actually going to help Absolutely. this city. Because right now we're that's screwed, dude. We about. can't do that's this. That's all I've ever cared we, about. No, I know. We cannot continue this, this is, way. It's going to be one of those elections, though. I think when your people are going to go into the voting booth, they've got all these choices, and they're going to—they're not the undecided. Is huge right now, and I don't think it'll change that much up until election day. I think people are going to walk in. They're going, okay. Well, I know the MPA, and I don't like Kennedy Stewart. And who's this Ken Sim guy? He kind of—he lost last time, so. I don't know. You know, he's what does he stand for? He doesn't talk. He, uh, you know, I think in the end they might just go uh, NBA. <laughs> so we'll see. But I, I, I do, it may not be enough to win though. It may not be enough to win because of just that split. So anyway, you, you know, who, you know who I think has enough doing, to win is, is Bolden for the anti uh, Kennedy people for sure. Right. I'm I'm going to shift to uh, to uh, provincial politics because I know who's going to be the next premier. <laughs> Who's that? The Green Party? I mean, well, you know, at the same token, remember the province newspaper um, with Adrian Dix on it that said he'd have to kick a dog in order to yeah, lose? So before, you know, but all signs are pointing towards David Eby. You know, I, certainly. I, mean, I tweeted out, uh, I think it was Cheryl Ziola tweeted, and I think I did something like about Brad West. I think, you know, and I don't know where Brad is. I'm kind of confused on where he is on the political spectrum, but obviously very popular. I would say he would give EB a run for the money. Um, he's not interested, I don't think, at all. He kind of tweeted He said back. he's not interested. I, he said he's yeah. not interested. And I talked to him uh, on the sidebar because I opened up phones on this when, when uh, Premier Horgan announced he was stepping down um, and, and leaving that space. And every single caller, George, every single caller, I was filling in for Mike Smith, 
every one of them said Brad West and I didn't even bring up Brad West. It wasn't even, <laughs> it, was, it was really <laughs> quite something. So we, really? so we took the, we took the link and we, I sent it to Brad and he's like, isn't that nice? Like it's super, super nice, but he's not done doing what he's doing. I don't think like many, I don't think he was expecting it all to come like right now. So, uh, um, yeah, that's right. I, I mean, mean, I think he wants to be mayor for at least two terms. Most people do want to do two terms. Yeah. Uh, although, you know, so, uh, so, but that's the kind of high level. Maybe you need somebody of, maybe he'll be the solicitor general, you know, maybe, you know, maybe he'll find his way in, in the next election and then work yeah. his way to prima. Who knows? Who knows? I don't Who know. Knows? Who knows? I think that, uh, it, it's just that you need the, the point being is like, who's going to take on EB? Somebody has to, it's pathetic. You know, like what is kind of democracy is that party? They don't even have a competition. Nobody wants the job. I mean, I, I imagine it's a horrible job, but uh, you know, dealing with your caucus and politicians every day. Oh, horrible. <laughs> it's a lot for sure. Um, it's a lot. Do you have, a, I have a couple things I want to ask your opinion on Trudeau's haircut. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, I saw some people on Twitter and stuff, uh, and I think TikTok, they were quite cruel. You know, a little, little bit of gel would be nice. A little bit of something. A little, you know, a little, Just a little. little, 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 little I thought it was very George Clooney, circa 19, 1992 yeah, George Clooney. Yeah, that's Clooney. what I thought, too. Yeah, I mean, yeah totally. Uh, I think I had that haircut in 1992 with a goatee. It was the whole look. Right. Uh, George, George is George. Ta-da. Yeah, that's right. The only other George I, I knew. Thanks God for George Clooney and Ben Affleck. Otherwise, my name would be terrible. That's right. Look at you. Look, you're look just, you're the hybrid I'm, of the I'm, hotness. I'm like a, I'm a DNA experiment. What's the most you've ever paid for? What's the most you've ever paid for a concert ticket? What's the most you've ever paid for a concert ticket? Oh, I'm pretty cheap. Um, Who's your probably... all time favorite band? What's, what's the most you would pay to see your ultimate? Who's your ultimate? Do well, you have an ultimate? I mean, and I know why you're bringing this up because I've seen Springsteen three times, I think. Uh, oh, yeah. One of the best concerts I've by far. I took Amanda last time he was here and she doesn't even like Springsteen. And she was like, oh, he, you know, he's 70 or whatever. She's like, well, what just happened? Uh, Coldplay is pretty amazing. You two used to be great, but the last couple of times yeah. I've seen them, it's like, meh. Uh, so but I think 4,000. Yeah, no, 4,000. I mean, I, I think 300 bucks, I think, is the most I've ever paid, perhaps, for a right. ticket. Yeah. For the Stones, I think, in Seattle. Um, so yeah, no, I wouldn't pay that much for any concert. I, 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 I just, I, I just, you know, I'll just listen to them on my, on my, and on your my, Spotify, on yeah. my Spotify, on my, on my Apple music, whatever you use. I prefer Farhaven. I would pay, I would pay endless amounts of money to see the great band Farhaven. Uh, They're awesome. <laughs> I'm going back and forth with your son Piers right now about some music for, uh, Steel and Vance, which actually the logo oh, dropped. Yeah, what do yeah. you think of the logo? Did you see it? Yeah, cool. Very. Sorry. What kind of scrap was there for the, the top billing? I mean, would you guys like a was it like a battle for Linda that? actually said, "I think Vance and Steel," and I said, "I think Steel and Vance rolls off the tongue better." And she said, "I think our logo should be teal." And I said, "I was thinking something more monochromatic." And she and she's like, "Well, I want to pop a color." I'm like, "Well, let's pop your name into pop a color, and I'll have my name in that." And so it's literally an example of two women working together on something that we are super excited Ugh. about. We've we've found working our together and all that stuff. Yeah. Oh, oh wait until we do this on. on the show though. We do not agree on everything at all. all right, I can we, imagine. We look like we look like. Does she know simple... what she's getting into? <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't called me. I, I I perhaps I should give her a call. Give her some more. You should. No, I'm kidding. Give her the insight. I'm you kidding. Smart ass. Hey, before we go, uh, just before we uh, got to air here, and, and certainly maybe for some people listening days later, uh, it won't be breaking news, but your thoughts on Joe Biden being uh, uh, announced that he has tested positive for COVID-19. Yeah, it's never good when an 80-year-old person gets COVID, for sure. So I think we should 79, 79. Whatever. I, I'm 60. And I'm not, but you know, it's, I'm already getting my brain ready for it. Uh no. I, I, you know, it's a worry. It's a big, you know, it just shows you this thing is out rampant. I mean, you haven't had it yet, which is, I think you're the only person I know now who hasn't had it. Everybody yeah. has had it. Everybody, I expect I to have it. it yeah. I, I've got yes, friends who had it four times. Yeah. Oh, but I test so all the doing? time now. What are, they, like, what are they doing? Come on. Um, living their best life, like getting out and doing the things. And I don't know. But no, I haven't had it no. yet, but I'm, I fully expect that I will. Um, but I also 
largely don't leave my house and I, you know, when I'm working, I, you know, I'm up oh, yeah. in, in my radio booth or I'm here doing the podcast. I walk the dogs outside. I largely gather with others outdoors just as a mm-hmm. thing. Um, I've had a couple of near misses when Don and Dolly uh, went down with COVID uh, at the Oh Boy Studios. Linda and I were in that studio. Uh, Wait, to Don and Dolly? Sort of Don Taylor and Rick Dollywall that oh. Don and Dolly, the show on check. So okay. they had it. Uh, they announced it the day after that we had been in the studio space. So the whole COVID is airborne, people. Relax. I ended up not getting it by breathing the air that was there with them earlier. So, But I do yeah. mask up and I wash hands and I, I stay distanced and I try and stick to my bubble because my parents are in their 80s and I spend mm-hmm. time with them. I'm, I'm pretty much just flexing the muscle that I've exercised over the last two and a half years. But I'm getting more social. Oh, and what I wanted to tell you about booking the concert. I booked my tickets for 5440 because they do the yearly concert in October, right? Uh, uh, the first weekend in October, their Guinness Book of World Commodore? Records. They've been at the Commodore. Every, the oh, band that's had the, that. the same venue. Oh, yeah, it's like 30 years now. It's crazy. But I oh, booked really? my ticket. And in and, and, and past years, most recent years, it's been $54.40. This time, much more. Why? Not because the band's charging more, but the Ticketmaster fees. It was $21 in fees. Oh, Are you on. kidding me, Ticketmaster? Yeah. I think we Actually, need a new... Actually, looked at the P&E, uh, this t- t- Ticket Leader, which is the P&E. It uses it. I think it's maybe their proprietary one that a lot of arts groups yeah. use. And I was looking at some of the shows that are happening at the P&E. Most of them are sold out. Because uh, I was looking at Chicago, and there's a few seats left there. But it was like 50 bucks plus $12 surcharge. So I was like, mm-hmm. well, just, you, your ticket system, just put the price... Why are you putting? Why are you telling me this? I don't even want to know. <laughs> Just right. it's sixty-one dollars for a ticket. Why? Why are you telling me it's forty-nine dollars when it's actually twelve dollars more than that? But twelve bucks for the competitor that's supposed to be alleviating the horrible world of Ticketmaster and its pricing and its its charges. So it's like I don't get it. You you, you get a, I thought you got a percentage for the people who already were, you know, giving you the concerts. Uh, anyway, right. Whatever. How do we? Let's start a know. ticket system. How hard going to be? We'll come up with a new way, George. You and me. That's it. That's all we got time for. Uh, on Dover. Twitter, you're at George underscore Affleck. I'm Jody with a Y Vance at Jody Vance on Twitter. Unspunpodcast.com is where you uh, subscribe Sign to up. this here weekly mm-hmm. podcast. Sign up. We don't sell your information. We just give you the deets in an unspun fashion. And boy, this we one went by this. fast, man. This. This, this is what we got. This is the current. This, this, this thing. All this. <laughs> Say goodbye, Bye. <laughs>